Hello and welcome to Flicks and Joysticks Retro Remix. I'm your host, Guy, and on Blu-ray today, Rampage comes out. Rampage was based off the Midway Arcade game from the 1980s, and I really liked that movie as ridiculous as it was. So in honor of the Blu-ray release today, I wanted to share my retro remix on that, give you little thoughts about what I thought, and certainly I'll be looking fun to that coming out. Also, as a little side note, I just wanted to give a shout out to one of my friends who gifted me this wonderful item a couple weeks back, and it is awesome. I always had a little fun with Rampage, and so now I can have a big giant stretch George wherever I go. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? It makes all sorts of crazy noises. That was one I've not heard before, so that was cool. What else you got? I have no idea what that was, but good for you, George. Anyway. Here is my review. Hope you enjoy it, and I hope you check out Rampage. Rampage the Movie. Now, you've probably heard some talk about Rampage and how they've somehow managed to turn a 30-year-old arcade button masher video game into a movie. And, well, considering the state of movies these days, is it really that big of a surprise? Rampage came out in 1986 and was developed and published by Midway Games. It's come out on every video game system known to humanity, from the Nintendo to the Sega to even Atari 2600 version. My favorite version of Rampage was the Sega Master System, as it was significantly better than the Nintendo Entertainment System one, having all three monsters, much better graphics, and even a soundtrack and an ending. So, what do you get from a movie like Rampage? Well, for a minimum of $10 a ticket, you better get that titular Rampage that they so promise on the box, and you actually really do. By the end of this movie, everyone's tearing up buildings left and right, and it's really awesome. However, it does take a little time to build up to that because they do manage to build a story out of this game. Are you going to get an incredible story that mines the depths of the Rampage lore? Eh, not so much. But they did manage to put something slightly credible together, all things considered. As if you needed an excuse for a giant gorilla, wolf, and lizard to tear through a city. The movie stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson, starring in yet another movie. It gets harder and harder to find a movie that doesn't star The Rock in it. Honestly, it's amazing how many movies The Rock is in these days. I mean, it's almost like just this constant string. It seems like every other film stars The Rock, and even more specifically, The Rock ends up in some sort of jungle setting. I like to think of these movies as just a regular day in the life of Dwayne Johnson. He goes through his day-to-day -day of fighting monsters, getting sucked into board games, being a singing, dancing demigod. There's really not much The Rock doesn't do these days, so, you know, hey, here we are. The movie also stars Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who plays Negan from The Walking Dead, and he kind of pseudo-reprises his role here, just kind of a more casual, laid-back, definitely more heroic version of it. And the movie also stars Joe Maginello, as you may remember as Al Seed from True Blood, who heroically choked through some of the most god-awful plot points in existence. He was also in Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and he was marvelously hilarious in that. He doesn't get a lot of screen time here, but it's nice seeing Joe again. So what's going on in this film? Yada yada, genetic mutation, blah blah blah, point, 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 just let's get to the fighting, and man, when it does, it's really awesome. They did make some changes from the arcade game. The three monsters are actually normal animals, and they're not humans that get mutated into giant rampaging beasts. A little disappointing, but you know what? Did you really play that game for the story? You just pounded buttons until you either ran out of quarters or went marginally insane from playing so long. But anyway, the gist of the story is this. Three canisters from outer space fall to Earth. One lands near a gorilla, one lands near an alligator, one lands near a wolf. They all mutate, get super aggressive, and are all called to Chicago to go climb a building and go beat the crap out of everything. You know, strangely, the way they described all the plot elements, they somehow work. And while they don't get into the human-animal crossbreeding, they do crossbreed a number of animal species together to make them the way they are. Surprisingly, it works. What I did actually find interesting about this series is how many references they managed to cram in from both the arcade and home games without making it seem obvious and cliched. You would have to play a lot of Rampage in order to catch some of those references. The movie starts in outer space, and there is actually a level in Rampage World Tour where the monsters do make it all the way to the moon to start blowing up moon bases, eating aliens, and everything else. At the beginning of the film, the space crew is stalked by a giant rat, which for some home versions of the game, there was a fourth character called Larry the Lab Rat. So the fact that they actually put Larry in the game for a very 
brief, you had to have been there cameo was kind of funny. The main bad guys had a Rampage and Mortal Kombat arcade game in their office that Rampage was featured pretty heavily in a couple of the scenes, which I thought was just a funny nod. There's a lot of talk. What if in this game world, these characters were playing the Rampage arcade game and this inspired to do all this genetic manipulation? gives you something to think about. Also, all of these genetic hijinks are based in Chicago where the three monsters converge to start ripping up the city. Another little known fact is Chicago is where Midway Games was originally based. That was their main headquarters. So a nice little nod to the Midway of old in there. And finally, one of the greatest references that was in the movie was uh, the lady in the red dress. If you remember from the arcade title screen, George's hand is holding a lady in a red dress. And of course, in the game, you can eat people. I was so pleased that they actually referenced that. And I didn't catch it at first. And when I did, I was like, oh, God, please do it. And yes, yes, they did. The only disappointment was is that they didn't do any of the funnier scenes. Like they didn't catch anyone in the middle of a shower or anyone on the toilet like you do in the arcade games. But they were definitely bashing around cars, ripping people out of buildings and eating them. They really went the whole way once the movie gets started. As I said, it's slow. They build up with all these plot points. But once the three monsters get into Chicago and they start ripping up the city to go towards the signal that they're being led to, it's fun. I'm not going to lie. It's fun. It's big, dumb, goofy humor, exactly like the arcade game. And they just they just go nuts, and there's some great action sequences. It's actually some better CG than a lot of recent films. Definitely better than Justice League. So is Rampage going to be remembered as a true classic of cinema that will go down and be remembered by all? Nah, let, let's be honest. It's a product of its time. It's, it's definitely for the fans. They try to take the source material, but they are not so beholden to it that they're completely trapped by it. We're dealing with an arcade game that had a minimalistic plot at best. There's a surprising amount of heart and interaction with everything between The Rock and George the Gorilla. The Gorilla special effects are excellent, but then Ralph and Lizzie are also really cool looking too, and they're much more genetically freakish than George is. Couple surprises, a lot of violence. Uh, definitely, I, I don't know, I kind of thought this was going to be more of a kid's film in a lot of ways, but, and it it's okay, I don't think it's like obsessively violent, but they definitely get into some more violent scenes, I mean, they're stomping people, they're eating people, they're trashing buildings and crushing planes, and you know people aren't walking away from any of this. They do leave the ending just open enough to possibly do a sequel if they felt so inclined. Maybe they will do that Midway Cinematic Universe after all, and start leading into other Midway game-based properties. It also makes you wonder about the future of Rampage and if Warner Brothers Interactive is going to plan any new games to show off this year at E3. We'll see, but I do know that Adrenaline Amusements is putting out a Rampage 2018 arcade game that will be exclusively playable at Dave & Buster's that will be more based on the movie versions of the characters. So it could be interesting. I personally would like to see a new Rampage arcade game, but not necessarily in the style of the old ones. I did enjoy the classic Rampage arcade game, but if they ever do an update on it, I hope they do something that's not quite as repetitive. As far as movies go, Rampage is exactly what it says on the box. It's not going to change your worldview. It's not going to inspire you to do greater things. It's three monsters beating the crap out of each other and entire city blocks and eating people. And if you love monster movies, I can definitely recommend this. If you like big, goofy action movies, I can definitely recommend this. If you like The Rock movies, I can definitely recommend this. Besides, you'll only have two other movie choices this year that won't have The Rock in it, so you're pretty much in luck if you're a big Rock fan. I liked Rampage. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm actually more surprised that I am saying it, as a matter of fact. I knew what I was getting into, and it delivered exactly that. So as far as it goes, I'm satisfied. I got exactly what I wanted. In a world ravaged by combat, where monsters dare to rampage, and humanity faces its doom, true fear comes from a boy.